What's up guys? I'm Randall. This is Grunt Proof. Today we're talking about casualty blankets, more specifically the U.S. Army casualty blanket. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably seen my How Soldiers Sleep video, the Legendary Ranger Roll video, and my spin on the winter version. And if you like the Grunt Proof series, you've definitely seen the videos where I am destroying civilian emergency blankets and tarps. And you may remember that in all of those videos, I mentioned the U.S. Army Casualty Blanket, or the original Army Casualty Blanket, and the fact that I was never able to find it again. Well, I finally found it, and here is why it was so hard to find. The U.S. Army casualty blanket was never a standard issue item to individual soldiers. It was, however, purchased in large bulk orders, usually by certain companies, supply sergeants. It was something medical stations would have on hand for field operations or later on deployments. It was essentially a more hardcore version of the traditional space blankets that we all know about created by NASA around the 60s for whatever they were doing up there, later adopted by marathon runners and any kind of endurance athletes, they throw it over them. Because it would help their bodies avoid rapid temperature changes, it would help those athletes avoid hyperthermia. Well, somewhere around the 80s, the US Army adopted a civilian version that ended up getting its own NSN. That was called the Casualty Blanket, and it was created by a company called MPI, or MPI Outdoors. They were essentially an outdoor company with all kinds of other pieces of gear. Somewhere along the lines, the U.S. military wanted a tougher space blanket. MPI was awarded that government contract, and a lot of military units began purchasing those blankets. I came across the item in a Connex, as we usually do with older issued items. There were stacks of them. They were primarily used for medevac situations because they did have small grommets on them and you could put them around a litter to evacuate a casualty, hence the name casualty blanket. As the decades went on, the blanket got phased out. At least the army found new contracts to get from. They found smaller, lighter blankets. We will talk about some of those later on. And once I started getting back into the outdoors and playing with gear, I started to try to look for these blankets again, and I just couldn't find them anywhere. I, I didn't know MPI. I didn't know the stock number or the NSN. So I was basically Googling U.S. Army casualty blanket because that's all I knew it by. A couple of you guys sent me some very helpful links that I followed. Thank you very much. And as it turns out, the original MPI blanket is still around, but you will notice something. Down here, it says grabber. What happened is Grabber acquired MPI Outdoors, I believe around 2008. So even though the blanket remained the same and the NSN remained the same, the companies changed. I have not seen these in army units in years. So I believe we've totally phased them out and we've gone to a different company and a different style blanket. I was stoked to come across this because I'd been looking for it forever and I finally found it. If you're ever looking for what I call the original army casualty blanket, it is simply the grabber blanket. Now, is this grunt proof? Most likely not. However, unlike the emergency blankets that I tested in grunt proof and destroyed, I was testing those against those companies marketed and priced claims that you could use it as a shelter. All their YouTube product pushers, all their marketing will show them using these as shelters. I will tell you guys, I would never use this as a shelter. I guess in a purely emergency situation, you could put it in a low to the ground A-frame, but that would mainly be to keep the rain off of you. If you have some kind of overhead cover already, you're better off using this as it was intended to be used as a blanket or to supplement your shelter. As an example, I always carry those big black thick, what we call potato chip clips. I always carry at least four of those. So if you had a shelter low enough to the ground, you wanted to stay a little bit warmer, you can actually just clip this to your shelter and there you go, you have a little bit of reflection if you don't need it on the ground or right on your body. 
For an emergency casualty blanket, yes, it's grunt proof. I've used the crap out of it. If you check out my winter ranger roll video, or I think I called it the legendary ranger roll, and then I just added my winter twist on it, this would be the perfect blanket for something like this. It's light, it's tough for that purpose. You can use it as a ground sheet, but the number one reason why I will support this product for its proper use is the simple fact that it is made in America. It's not made with slave labor, and it does have some nostalgia attached to it. I will stand by this product. It is the size of a poncho, that's five by seven. Until the YouTube product pushers started trying to use these Chinese blankets as shelters, there was nothing wrong with this blanket. If you think about it, it is essentially a space blanket, but a lot tougher. And that was the whole point of this product. The main complaint I saw of these YouTubers was the grommets. The grommets are tiny. Well, if you think about its originally intended purpose, the grommets were not so you could build a shelter. As I've shown, you will destroy these very quickly in any kind of high wind or high tension situation. These grommets are there so you could put this blanket around a casualty on a litter. You could tie this down to the litter. They could be moved to the truck or they could even be airlifted without this blanket falling off of the casualty. That is the whole point of the casualty blanket. That's why it's two steps up from the typical weak flimsy space blanket and that's why it's also not called a shelter. They do cost about the same price as all the cheap Chinese stuff, and to me, that is awesome because you have an American-made product. It was a military item. It still holds the NSN, and it still comes with the NSN when you purchase it, and it's not outsourced slave labor. If you are just looking for a cheap reflective blanket to get, you're not gonna try to do a shelter out of it like the YouTube product pushers. You're not gonna do anything silly with it. Maybe stuff it in your car for emergencies or something like that. Play around with the Winter Ranger Roll system I showed you guys then you will be good to go. Thanks for watching guys and big thank you to the guys who sent me a couple very helpful links and brought me on this path of enlightenment. I hope you guys appreciate the history lesson as well. Stick around for more videos like this. Make sure you like and subscribe. Click that bell to get notified for new videos because YouTube doesn't think subscribing is good enough. And until that next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Take care of yourselves.